you're taking the NCLEX and it gives you this random med that you've never even heard of, but you do recognize the suffix. Well, guess what? You just answered that question without knowing that exact med or breaking a sweat. Let me show you how you can do this. So as we discuss further some of the things that you can do to answer any pharmacology question and how to make your um, experience with taking pharmacology questions a little bit easier, one of the things we need to discuss is the fact that there are common prefixes and suffixes to different medications. So this module, we're going to go over 54 of the most common prefixes and suffixes. Um, and this video is just going to give you a brief introduction to some of those. Now, surely you know some of them already from nursing school um, and from just working on the floor. Even if your teachers haven't explained them to you, um, surely you've noticed some patterns. Okay, now these are going to be prefixes and suffixes of the generic name of the medication. Now that's important because the NCLEX is going to test you over uh, generic names, okay? So we're going to focus, and you'll, you'll see this is throughout this entire course, we're going to focus all of our studies on generic names. Okay, so we're going to be talking about prefixes and suffixes with these. Most now, people fail the NCLEX because they think they're ready. Then test day hits and they completely freeze. SimClex simulates the NCLEX, and NCLEX Ready Score tells you how ready you are to take the NCLEX. Go to nursing.com to try SimClex and get your NCLEX Ready Score now. Now, as I said, the chart below, if you go below this video, the chart below there uh, discusses the complete uh, set of 54 different uh, prefixes and suffixes. In this video, we're just going to talk about uh, a handful of some of the most important ones you need to know. Okay, so. The first prefix we want to talk about is CEF, okay? Now, you've maybe given this. Uh, we're talking about cephaloxacin, um, and those are all going to be cephalosporins, okay? And that one's pretty easy to remember because the, the prefix CEF begins with the same as the actual uh, class. So anytime you see CEF, you're going to be thinking cephalosporin, okay? Um, and that is an antibiotic, all right? And I threw Rife on here, okay? Why did I throw Rife on here? because rifampin is one of the most commonly tested medications and it's one of the medications you really kind of need to understand uh, some of the side effects for uh, in order to take the NCLEX. We're going to discuss that later on in the course. But these rife drugs are going to be anti-tuberculins. The medication you really, really, really need to know is going to be rifampin. Okay. Now some of the suffixes. The One of the suffixes you need to know is actone. Okay. Actone, as in aldactone and spironolactone, are potassium-sparing diuretics. These are important uh, diuretics to understand because the NCLEX likes to test you about potassium levels. Um, and specifically, they're going to ask you about spironolactone, most likely. So it's important to understand that uh, patient may have increased potassium levels because this is a potassium-sparing diuretic. Psyllin. Now, this is a, a suffix you're familiar with from probably your life before nursing school, but psyllin are going to be penicillins like ampicillin and penicillin, of course. Ciclovir. We'll get into this more in another one as well, but this vir technically or has a tendency to oftentimes be antiviral. Okay, so ciclovir. The one you're going to see most often is going to be a ciclovir. A ciclovir, and some people say cyclovir. I, I say a ciclovir. Um, but basically, you need to understand the vir and ciclovir is going to be your antivirals. Dazzle. Okay, let's talk about dazzle for a second. Now, you'll see here dazzle is very close to prazzle. Okay, so make sure you understand that we're talking about the entire dazzle here and the entire prazzle down here. You really don't want to confuse those two. So dazzle, uh, these are a type of antimicrobial, uh, very common in metronidazole. Okay, that's also known as flagyl, F-L-A-G-Y-L, okay? So, dazzle, metronidazole, um, those are going to be your antimicrobials. And then prazzles are going to be your proton pump inhibitors. I always remember proton pumps from H2 receptor uh, antagonists from, from the PR, like protein, okay? So, that's going to be your prazzles, and that's going to be proton pump inhibitors, most common one is going to be pantoprazole, um, 
and then omeprazole. But the most common one you're probably going to see is, is uh, pentoprazole. And then let's go back to pril. Pril, I'm sure, is one of the first suffixes you learned. It's drilled into very often. Those are going to be your ACE inhibitors, okay? Things like your captopril, enolapril, lisinopril. Those are going to be your ACE inhibitors, okay? Next, let's talk about sartans. Sartans aren't as common as ACE inhibitors, though they're both antihypertensives. Uh, but anytime you see a sartan, valsartan, losartan, you're thinking angio 2 receptor antagonists, okay? And that's going to be given to also lower blood pressure, all right? And then we have our zones. These are also going to be like your quartz, okay? Your prefix quart. Uh, the suffix zone is going to be your corticosteroids, uh, generally anti-inflammatories. But, uh, you know, we, we'll talk more, but corticosteroids obviously have multiple methods of action or multiple uh, uses. So that's going to be things like cortisone, dexamethasone, prednisone. Notice the zone on all of those. Okay, then statins. Statins is a big one. Um, you're going to see rosuvastatin. That's one of the most common ones. Prevastatin. Um, those are going to be your HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, also known as your cholesterol-lowering drugs. Okay, so your statins are your HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, also known as cholesterol-lowering drugs. Most of the time, people are going to refer to these as just statins because HMG-CoA reductase is such a long, uh, tiring word. Then we'll talk about thiazide. Okay, thiazide are going to be your thiazide diuretics. NCLEX likes to test on this uh, because obviously we're looking for electrolyte imbalances with our uh, diuretics. So these are... Um, Hydrochlorothiazide will be one that you'll probably test it on. Tadine, tadine, these are your H2 receptor antagonists. Um, can be given to help prevent ulcers. Big one is going to be famotidine and rinetidine. Um, so, yeah, just look for the tadine. <laughs> and then, like I said, we talked about vir. Um, those are going to be antivirals. So, always, anytime you see that VIR, just think viral, VIR, viral. And then we have Zepam and Zolam. Um, these are popular medications because a lot of patients require them, um, and a lot of patients will take them while they're in the hospital. These are your benzodiazepines, um, anxiolytics, alprazolam, midazolam. Okay, so those are, and then, uh, so we didn't put one of the Zepams on here, sorry, lorazepam, which is Ativan. That's also a very common one. So your Zepams, Zolams, those are going to be your benzodiazepines given to uh, decrease anxiety. All right, so you guys, this is important to understand. Knowing, being able to work through these um, prefixes and suffixes is going to save you a tremendous amount of time on your um, NCLEX and as you're taking questions because once you understand them, then you can quickly identify what class it's in and from there you can understand what it's given for and what the contraindications are. So what I want you to do is I want you to go down to the bottom of this page and download the PDF. I also want you to take the quiz and then I want you to print out, so I want you to download it or print it um, and print it and then I want you to review the chart and focus on the ones you don't know. We have a tendency as nurses and as just human beings that we like to study things that we know because it makes us feel good but I want you to focus on the ones that you don't know. Okay, the ones that are hard for you to, if you, if you got your prills down, great. Just mark that one off your list and start studying the ones that you don't know. You print multiple versions of this every time. And maybe what I would maybe do is, is print multiple versions of this chart and then cut out each uh, section and kind of make flashcards out of that. Okay, so you can do that. Um, and, uh, and then as you remember one, throw it away. As you got one memorized, throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. Until you're down to the ones you really don't know. Once you have them all start over again. All right, guys. So go ahead and do those things. Move on to the next section. No one is going to save you. Not your professor, not your textbook, not some free video on YouTube. Look, this video is going to help you, but the entire survival package lives over at nursing.com. After you watch this free video, head over there and get your NCLEX ready score and take a SimCLEX now.